guys, welcome, I'm Ashley Lillis. Welcome to my channel. Um, today I really cannot wait to show you how to make this fabulous Springside Lace Cardigan. I just finished it and I wrote up the pattern and I'm so happy because I really wanted to, um, I knit this in a super bulky weight yarn, but I really wanted to show you guys how to knit this in any yarn weight or needle size because I, I love this lace stitch um, and I think it would also be great in like a DK weight or a worsted weight yarn. Um, I wanted to give you guys a lot of flexibility with um, what kind of yarn, what needle size you knit this in. So make sure you download the PDF pattern, the free PDF pattern with all the instructions. It goes through how to calculate everything. I'm going to walk you through a little bit, but basically this is a really open, um, drop shoulder sweater cardigan. Um, we knit everything flat. So you're going to knit the back panel. Then you're going to knit the left and the right panel. You're going to knit the sleeves flat. And then we seam the shoulders together. We seam the arms here, and then we fold the garment in half and seam up the arms and the side of the body. So it's a pretty simple construction. There is seaming, I'm really sorry, but this enables you to knit it um, on straight needles. I've gotten some requests to come up with patterns that are knit on straight needles. So you could knit this on straight needles if you would like, and nothing is knit in the round. Um, we do pick up and knit stitches um, for the collar, so you will need a longer circular needle um, to do the collar. But anyway, I um, can't wait to show you how to make this. Let's get started. Okay, I just wanted to take a second to walk you through the pattern quickly. So when I filmed the video, I filmed it um, thinking that I wasn't going to write a specific pattern up or guide up. I just kind of talked you through measurements and stuff, but download the PDF of the pattern um, by clicking the link in the video description and going to my website, entering your email address in the pink box, and then the page will redirect to a Dropbox link um, where you can download a PDF of the pattern. The pattern is written in six different sizes. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't like to reference extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, because that means different things to different people. I want you to pay attention to what the bust size is. So the, these are the finished bust sizes, but please note this is a drop shoulder boxy fit cardigan. So the bust will be very huge. I suggest going about six to 10 inches um, of positive ease, which means if you, for example, I knit like a size two and I'm a 37 inch bust. So that's about seven inches of positive ease. So these measurements, the finished bust, bust measurements are what the finished size of the cardigan is. So your bust size should be much smaller than the listed finished sizes. So I list all of these, um, A, B, C, D, E, F, all line up with what these measurements are so you can reference how big each um, section should be. So basically I used um, two, just over two skeins of Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick Yarn. That is a super bulky weight yarn on nine millimeter needles. So that is a pretty thick, thick sweater. So I wanted to design this so you could make this in any yarn weight or needle size um, that you would like. So basically, you will be calculating your own cast on stitches for the back, for the left and right panels, and for the sleeves. So there's only three different measurements you need to figure out. The, the back cast on stitches, and I have everything listed out here in the pattern, even giving you an example. So if you have 12 stitches in your four inch gauge, to figure out the back cast on stitches, you just do a ratio, stitches over inches, stitches over inches, or it could be stitches over centimeters. So you just need to plug it in. So if I'm knitting to determine my back cast on stitches for a size two, which is a 22 inch width, right? Or a 56 centimeter width, um, I do my gauge stitches, which is 12 stitches per four inches, basically x over 22 and then you solve for x so you 12 divided by 3 times 22 equals 66 stitches for the back stitches i think in the video i did 60 stitches so my gauge actually was a little under 12 stitches per four inches so i went down a little bit 
but you just need to make sure that your stitches are in multiples of three because this is a three stitch repeat for the Irish mesh lace stitch. Okay, so then you're gonna do the same thing for the left and right front panels. You just determine your cast on stitches for that panel doing the same kind of ratio, okay? And then same thing for the sleeves. You figure out your sleeve width based on your size and you plug that number into the ratio to figure out what your cast on stitches should be. I think in my video I did, I ended up doing 45 stitches to go down a little bit, but um, just wanted to walk you guys through um, how to calculate your cast on stitches. So it gives you a lot of freedom to make this in any yarn weight or needle size. So um, again, when I go through the video instructions, I'm just kind of talking you through measurements. This might help you alter measurements if you'd like, but just know you can always go back and reference the pattern as well. Okay, I'm gonna start by casting on 60 stitches. Um, make sure you've got enough of a long tail ready to go and make your slip knot. And then that counts as the first stitch and we're just gonna cast on 60 stitches. Make sure you've got your tail in front when you start casting on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Okay, so I've got my 60 stitches cast on, um, and you're gonna wanna make sure you cast on in multiples of three if you're changing up the number of cast on stitches. This is for the back of the work. So, um, and it's supposed to be quite large. We're doing lace, so it'll, it'll stretch a lot, but we want this to drape down really long off our shoulders. It's kind of an oversized look, so make sure um, you account for that. So now we're gonna just do a knit one, purl one rib stitch. Um, and I think we're gonna do this um, for about three inches. Um, so I will check back in here with you in a little bit after we get going, but you're just going to simply Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And this is the wrong side of the work. You can see that this is the right side of the work. Wrong side, right side. So um, not that it matters at this point, but when we get going with our lace stitch, then it'll matter. So just keep going, knitting one, purler. So we end with a purl stitch here. And then we turn the work. And then we're going to just simply do a knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl one. So you keep, and this is the right side of the work. You can see um, the cast on edge just looks a little bit more, it's a little bit nicer looking here. You can see kind of that braided look on the bottom. So this is the right side of the work. So we are going to continue this, this one by one rib for about three inches ending after a wrong side row. So we're gonna start the lace when we are um, just beginning a right side row. So I will see you back here after you completed the one by one rib. Um, for about three inches. Okay, so now I've completed about three inches of the one by one rib. I'll show you here. It's about three inches, just under. That's fine. Um, you need to make sure you're ending so that a right side is facing you. So the right, I just finished the wrong side. I flipped it over. And now the right side is facing me. You can see that's the right side. That's the wrong side. Okay, so now we are going to begin the Irish mesh stitch. So row one of the Irish mesh stitch, say that three times fast, is knit two. You start by knitting two at the beginning. 
And then this is the repeat. Yarn over, slip one knitwise, knit two, pass that slip stitch over those two stitches you just knit. Okay, now we're gonna just repeat that. Yarn over, slip one knitwise, knit two, pass that slip stitch over those two knit stitches, yarn over, slip one, knit two, pass that stitch over, yarn over, slip one, knit two, So you're gonna continue this all the way till you get to the last stitch and then you're gonna knit one. So the repeat is yarn over, slip one knitwise, knit two, slip the stitch over. Okay, so I'll see you back here. I'm gonna continue this all the way till we get to the end. All right, and when you get to that last stitch, you simply knit one. Okay, so we're gonna turn the work now, and all we're going to do is purl back. So just purl every stitch, making sure you purl those yarn overs. So you just purl every stitch all the way back. And then I'll show you how to do row three. So we, we finished row one, row two is purl back on the wrong side, and row three is very similar to row one, we're just shifting where the yarn over and the passing that slip stitch over is in the work. So I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, I'm nearing the end of that purl row. Now I am going to flip the work and get ready for the row three. So row three is just knit one, and then here's the repeat. Slip one knitwise, knit two, slip that, um, pass that slip stitch over those two knit stitches. Okay, and then you're going to yarn over. So we're doing the same thing. We're just switching the positioning of what we did for row one. So it's very similar, but you're just starting and, and kind of moving it over so it's in a different spot. So um, then you just continue this um, slip one, knit two, and uh, pass that slip stitch over. Yarn over, slip one, knit two, pass that slip stitch over. And you'll get to see like the positioning kind of lines up. So if you're if you're messing up, it won't um, the positioning won't look correct. But you need to make sure you're ending, like you repeat this repeat all the way to the last two stitches and then you knit two. If you've got a different number of stitches at the end, it means you're off somewhere. So you'll have to go back and figure out where you messed up. So reference um, the video description where I list out what the pattern is for rows one through four. I know a lot of people, um, like for me, I need to visually see um, the pattern instead of just following the video. So this is what it starts to look like. Um, so yarn over, slip one, knit two, and then um, I'll show you what to do when you get towards the end, but you're simply going to yarn over and then knit two when you get to the end. Okay, so I end on a yarn over 
on row four and then knit two. Okay, so now you're just gonna turn the work and purl back for row four. Row four is just purl again on the wrong side of the work. So you're always purling on the wrong side of the work, which is typical of a lot of lace stitches. You, um, when you're working flat, when you're working back and forth, just purl on the wrong side. Okay, so we have just gone through four rows of the lace stitch. So it is a four row repeat, which means you just continue repeating rows one through four over and over. So this is row four that I'm purling back on now. So we're gonna go back to a row one, which is knit two, yarn over, slip one, knit two, pass the slip stitch over. So you're just gonna continue doing that until your desired length. So I'm gonna kind of get going here and see how the length is working out. So I'll touch base with you and go over how long to make your work. Okay, so I finished row four, I'm back on the right side. So I've completed four rows of the Irish mesh stitch. So now it's time to start row one again, which is simply the knit two, and then the repeat is yarn over, slip one knitwise, knit two, pass that slipped stitch over. And now you can see that past slip stitch over is directly on top of that first row. So it's kind of lining up now. So that's just a way to kind of keep track to make sure you're on, um, to make sure you're on the right row and to make sure you're, um, you're not getting out of place with your stitches. So you just keep doing this again and then you'll purl back for row two and then repeat row three and then four and then start all over again. So you just continue this until you get to the length you're supposed to get to, the top of the work where the neck and the shoulders are. So this is the back piece. Um, so I will touch base with you once I have knit a bit and figure out how long um, I want to make my back piece. Okay, I've just completed a wrong side row, so now I'm on the right side. I'm at the point where I'm going to bind off for the back, and I just wanted to talk to you guys about measurements at this point and length of the back. Okay, and this is really where you can customize how long you want your sweater, your cardigan to be. I always like to reference another sweater I've made just for length um, to make sure it's about, you know, how I want it to fit. So you can take another sweater that fits you and measure it from top to bottom on the back and um, use that as a reference. Now I do want to say um, as far as the sleeves go, um, I will probably leave about um, eight inches or so for the sleeve, okay? And so if I do that, if that's eight inches for the sleeve and um, 12 inches for the rest of the body. So overall, I'm at about 20 inches. If you want, you can measure your, the circumference of your arm at the point where the back will stop on your arm and give yourself um, some positive ease for that. It, depending on what kind of yarn you're using, um, this actually kind of shrunk back together a lot um, overnight after I stopped knitting. Um, I will probably steam block this um, at the end, just so you know. Okay, so we are on the right side now. So now I'm gonna show you how to bind off. And I'm just going to do a simple bind off here on the right side of the work. We're just gonna bind off knitting. So we're just going to knit one stitch, knit another stitch, and slip that first stitch over the second stitch. And try to do this consistently um, with your tension and but do it a little looser. Okay, we don't wanna do this really tight. So you're gonna keep knitting every stitch and slipping that first stitch over the second stitch. And you're gonna do this all the way across here. 
So keep working, keep binding off all the way across. And then I'll show you what to do when you have one stitch left. And that's what it starts to look like here. Okay, I'm nearing the end here of binding off. And then when I have one stitch left here, I'm going to clip a tail, um, but I'm gonna clip it kind of long so it gives me enough room, enough room to seam that top shoulder so we can use that same strand to seam that top shoulder. So I'm gonna cut it, I don't know, probably about 18 inches or so. It's probably more than enough. Okay, so we have our back done at this point. And now we're going to make the, the left and right front panels, okay? And they will be identical. So I'm gonna show you how to make one of them and then you'll just repeat that to make the other one. Okay, so now I just wanted to explain a little bit of the math on the front panels, okay? So we're gonna have a left panel and a right panel and you're gonna make them both the same. Um, I recommend leaving about six inches um, of an opening in the center so that you have room for ribbing and the cardigan has, has room to um, go around your neck. I like mine to fit a little closer together. So if I am at 22 inches width and I want six inches in the center, um, that leaves me eight inches for each front panel. And then we'll do two inches of ribbing, which will then leave a two inch opening. Um, and I just like my fronts to come a little bit closer together, to meet a little bit closer in the center. Um, that's just how I like design it. If you wanna do a wider opening, like if you want eight inches open of an opening, um, go for it. So what you're gonna need to do is figure out how many stitches to cast on um, to get you to your desired width for your left and right front panels. So take some time to figure that out with your gauge and then we'll get started making the left and right panel. And just for reference, so if I'm knitting eight inches, an eight inch panel, and my gauge is 12 stitches per four inches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I have about 12 stitches for four inches here in my gauge. So I'm doubling that to get to um, eight inches here. So I am just going to cast on 24 stitches for my front left panel. And same thing as we did before. We're gonna do our ribbing. We're gonna do our three inches of ribbing. Um, and then go into our Irish mesh stitch. Okay, and just remember that when you figure out the number of stitches you need for the left and right panels, make sure they're in multiples of three again. Okay, everything has to be in multiples of three. So I am just casting on now 24 stitches for my panel. Okay, so I will see you back here once I've completed the panel, so same thing, you know, cast on your stitches, do your ribbing, um, and then complete the Irish mesh stitch for the same length. I'll check back in here in a little bit with you um, just to show you how the panel is looking. Okay, so make sure you just continue the same. I just wanted to mention too, so like I said, um, you need to be in multiples of three. I ended up with an even number that is also a multiple of three. You might not end up with an even number. So the knit one, purl one might be a little off. So just always start with the knit one and then um, purl one. And then if it's an odd number, you'll end up with um, the same stitch on the end as you started with. Just make sure you, you um, knit one, purl one you knit into the knit stitches and purl into the purl stitches. Um, so when it's even, it's knit one, purl one, and you repeat that, and you do that on both sides. But when you end with a knit one, when you turn it over, you're gonna need to um, start with a purl one. 
so it can be a little confusing. If you can do even stitches, that is great. But I know not everybody will be even. So I'm ending with a purl one, but if this, if I end with a knit stitch, when I turn over, that knit stitch becomes a purl stitch, so you would start opposite on the other side. Hope that makes sense. It took me a while to understand that when I first started knitting. Okay, I finished the ribbing, and I just wanted to show you one more time. The panel will look a little tiny, probably. Um, and again, if you wanted to go down on your needle size for the ribbing, feel free if yours isn't looking really tight. Um, but just figure out what uh, needle size you need to go down to to get a pretty good um, ribbing going. Just use the same one you used at the beginning for the back. Okay, so we're going to just, after we've completed the ribbing, the same length as the back, um, which is three inches in my case, we're going to start the Irish mesh stitch, which is knit two, yarn over, slip one knitwise, knit two, Pass that slip stitch over, yarn over, slip one, knit two, pass that slip stitch over, yarn over, slip, knit two, pass that slip stitch over. So the same thing will apply, you're just knitting um, a smaller width. So just keep working all the way across here, turn over, slip one, knit two, turn over, slip one, knit two, and then when we get to one stitch, we just knit that last stitch. Okay, then you turn the work over, same thing as before, and purl back. Okay, so then you'll do row three and row four, and you'll keep repeating that four row repeat again. But I just wanted to show you what the panel was looking like, but I will see you back here um, once I have both of my panels finished. All right, see you back here. Okay, so I have finished, I've gone to the same, I've knit to the same length um, as the back. And so for my, one of my front panels here, so this is what it's looking like. And I've lined it up and made sure that I've knit it to the same length. I even counted like the number of um, clusters to just to make sure that they're actually the same length and now I'm just going to bind off on the right side again um, so that I can begin my other panel. So again, when you bind off, it's just knitting one, knitting two, slipping that first stitch over and just continuing all the way across in this manner. And when you get the last, when you get to the last stitch, you cut a tail and pull the last stitch through. Okay, and then you're, again, you're gonna repeat the same thing for the other panel. We need a left panel and a right panel. Okay, so I will see you back here when I've got both panels done and it is time to seam the shoulders. Okay guys, I've got my Left and right front panels finished. I've got my back panels finished. And so now I suggest seaming the shoulders and knitting the collar before you move on to the arms. This way you can try the cardigan on and see how long you actually want to make the sleeves. And it just helps to visualize the sweater and how it's gonna fit on you and that might help you decide to make some changes to the sleeves or it'll just help you overall figure out how you want the sleeves to fit. So anyway, again, just wanted to show you the math here. Um, and this does shrink up. It really does shrink once it's been sitting a while. Um, okay, so let me show you here. So again, my overall width 
here is 22 inches making sure I'm on this camera here it's about 22 inches and then I made each front eight inches and then I've got about a six inch gap in the middle okay so now I'm going to show you how to seam up um, the fronts to the backs so this is the right side of the work so you first want to make sure to flip it over so the right side is on the back and then we can place I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna seam up my left front here I've got the tail already on my work here from from um, ending the work over there um, and just note um, if you leave tails long enough, you can use that to seam up. I don't think that's actually long enough, unfortunately, um, which is too bad. But you can just join a new piece of yarn. So I'm going to show you how to sew up this front. And you always want to start on the end and work your way in because if you misjudge, um, you can be sticking out here. So I always suggest starting on the ends and working, working your way in. Okay, so you're going to want to line the work up so that you've got the right side of the work facing you and you can take your tapestry needle and your yarn on the end and you're going to pull it through here and then now I like to just first connect on the outside. <clears throat> just pull it through here. And now we're gonna be working through the V's, okay? And I like to work through um, the V's going this way. So we bound off knitting. So I'm going to insert my needle right here so it's a V going this way that's the V and then I'm going to insert my needle through the V going the opposite so they're like mirrors okay I'll try to get this a little closer here so this is how I like to seam up so you stick your needle through the V going that way and then the V going in the opposite direction. So I came out there. So I'm going to go in through the next V right here. And you keep pulling through. And this creates kind of a nice seamless look. There's the V. Pull it through. And you can see where you came out previously. Now I'm going to do the V going in the opposite direction there. So you just want to maintain kind of the mirrored look. So the V goes up this way here and the V is kind of upside down there. So there's the V. And the V in the opposite direction is kind of like an upside down V there. Okay, so you continue working all the way across. And then um, I'll show you how to end it. And I just wanted to mention it can be kind of hard to see which stitch exactly to go into because of the lace. But pay attention to where you've come out. I came out there so I need to go into the next full stitch. Okay, I came out there and I go through the next full stitch there. Okay, came out there so I go in here, just try to keep it all even. It can be confusing with the lace, so I just wanted to show you exactly what I'm doing here. And you will, I mean, you'll get a bit of a seam. Um, as you can see, it is kind of thick there. But when you're working with super bulky yarn, unfortunately, that's kind of it's kind of what happens. Okay, 
So as you approach the end here, Just be sure to continue here. And then I always like to end on the inside. So go through this last stitch here, go through the end. And then you simply just release this and we will weave this in, end in later. But look, it's pretty good and pretty seamless as far as stitch there. So that is how you seam the shoulders up. And so you're gonna just do the same thing with the other side. Take the work, you can join the yarn. Um, that won't be long enough, but um, you can just join a new piece of yarn with the tapestry needle and start um, seaming up from the outside and work your way in. So I'll see you back here when you've got the left and right front seamed and then we will pick up stitches for the collar. Okay, so I've seamed my shoulders and now it's time to pick up stitches for the collar. And what we are gonna do is pick up three stitches for every four rows along the left front I'm sorry, along the right front. Then we're gonna pick up stitches, one stitch for each stitch across the back here. And then three stitches for every four rows going down the left front here. So we're gonna start, like I said, on the bottom of the right front. And we are going to pick up three stitches for every four rows. When we knit perpendicularly to the work, we need to not pick up um, you got to space the stitches out a little bit more because you're going to end up with too many stitches. Um, the ratio just isn't one for one. It'll really stick out. So when you join yarn and pick up stitches, um, and just to note, I am using a nine millimeter 40 inch needle to do this. Um, if you want to go down a needle, a needle size to make sure that your ribbing is, um, tight enough for you, go ahead. I knit pretty tight in my one by one rib and my knit one purl one. So I'm not gonna go down a needle size, but if you did previously, feel free to do that here. Um, okay, so we're gonna start at the bottom here. And what I really suggest is going through that very last stitch down here. You wanna make sure you do that because the work kind of will scrunch up um, a little bit with the rib. Okay, so we're gonna start by going in that bottom stitch there, and you're gonna take your yarn, your new yarn, you're gonna join the work, and you are going to go up and over the needle and pull it through both of those bars. Okay, so that's the first stitch we've picked up. That doesn't really count as the um, pick up. We're not gonna skip a stitch here. Okay, so now you're gonna go into the very first stitch here. We're going to be working all the way up the side here, going in the side of the work like this. Okay. And here's what we do. Okay. We're going to pick up this first stitch here. We're going to pull the yarn from underneath and over, so our stitches are facing in the right direction. And then you're gonna pull it through. Okay, there we go. So that's our, f I'm not counting this first stitch as a stitch. One, and then we're gonna go in the next space here. Two, skip a stitch here. three. So we just did three stitches for every four rows minus this stitch here. Again, this is just to help us keep the work a little more even at the bottom. Okay, so here's what we do. And I know it can be a little confusing to figure out where to go in, but basically each 
one of these is a row. So it looks like this. One, two, skip a stitch here, or skip a row, three. One, two, skip a stitch or skip a row, three. Okay, so it's going to be long. You're going to have um, a lot of stitches on this needle and they'll be a little scrunched. So keep doing that all the way up the side here. And then I'll meet you back here when we get to the back and just show you how to go through every stitch on the back here. Okay, so I've picked up stitches all along my right front here. And now I'm at the back. I'm gonna turn the work here so you can see me. Now I'm gonna pick up every stitch, pick up a stitch for every stitch. So that's just going in each of those stitches across the side. And make sure you are picking up the stitches by wrapping the yarn up and over the needle and pulling through. This makes sure that our stitch is facing the same way as if you were knitting normally. So just to show you, for example, if you insert your, your um, needle and you go over, when you pull it up, your stitch is actually facing the wrong direction. So you work your way across the back. And then when you hit the left front, you're gonna be doing the exact same thing, picking up three stitches for every four rows along the left front. And then make sure when you're nearing the end that you have an even I'm sorry, an odd number of stitches. Um, here, now I'm gonna start going down this side by doing one, two, skip a row or skip a stitch, three. Okay, so then you just work down the other side of the work the same way we worked up. And then when you near the end, try to make sure you have an odd number of total stitches. When we do our one by one rib, this will allow you to end with the same stitch that we started with. You'll end with, if you start it with a knit stitch, you'll end with a knit stitch. That just ensures that the bottom of the collar looks the same on both sides, okay? So I'll meet you back here when I have picked up all of my stitches. Okay, I've got all of the stitches I have picked up kind of bunched on this needle. It's a little tight, as you can see. Okay, so that's normal, um, and that's okay. So now we um, are gonna start the one by one rib, but I just wanna show you here. So this is the right side of the work, um, and here is the end of my yarn, which is on the bottom of the left front. We're actually gonna turn this all over now because we're just going to be working back and forth in this one by one rib. So, um, you're gonna wanna grab your other needle here and start the rib. Um, I want my last stitch on the right side to be a knit stitch on the front, so I actually need to start with a purl stitch on the back. So we're on the wrong side of the work, so I'm going to just do a purl one, knit one, all the way around, and since we have an odd number of stitches on our needle, we're gonna end with a purl one if we started with a purl one. So if you're not that particular about how the end looks, like just pick up stitches and just do a one by one rib, knit one, purl one, and whatever you end with, you end with, um, but if you want your bottom stitch to match on each side, just make sure you have an odd number of stitches that you have picked up. So you just continue the knit one, purl one, 
And then you're gonna turn the work and just purl the purl stitches, knit the knit stitches, um, just as you did before. And then we're gonna bind off. Okay, so we're gonna continue the one by one rib for, I'm gonna go for about two inches and see what that's looking like. Maybe I'll go for three just to have it be equal to the bottom ribbing. Um, I design on the fly here. So I will be back in a little bit and show you what the one by one rib is looking like. But again, just knit one, purl one, knit the knit stitches, purl the purl stitches after your first row. Okay, so I will see you back here after I've completed some of this ribbing. Okay, I just wanted to show you I'm nearing the end of my first knit one, purl one row here. And um, I'm gonna be ending with a purl stitch since I started with a purl stitch because I have an odd number of stitches. And then it can be a little, since um, that last stitch is the one where we, we picked up and started knitting and um, joined the yarn, it can be a little loose. So you just wanna kind of pull it um, so it stays secure there. So we finished our first knit one, purl one round. We're gonna turn the work. And because I have an odd number of stitches um, and I ended with a purl, when I'm on the right side, I'll be starting with a knit stitch. Okay, and that first stitch again might be a little loose because that's where we joined our yarn. So you can just kind of tug on that a little bit. So that's knit the knit stitch purl the purl stitch. And you can see the purl, the purl, the purl, the purl. Purl, purl, purl. Okay. Okay, so now I will meet you back here once I've completed the ribbing um, for a certain length. So um, I'll join you back here then. Again, I'm thinking between two and three inches. I'm gonna stop at two inches and see, but I think I'm probably gonna end up doing three inches, which is the same as the bottom ribbing. If you wanna make it shorter or longer, feel free. Okay, so I have done my ribbing. You can see it coming together now. And it is measuring now, it's measuring uh, just, un eh, uh, just under two and a half inches or so just about two and a half inches. It's gonna be a little smaller um, than the bottom. So I'm ending after I finish the wrong side, so I'm facing the right side of the work, and now I'm gonna bind off. And I'm just gonna do a regular bind off as we've been doing um, for the other bind offs, and I'm just going to knit in the pattern. So knit one, purl one, and bind off. And it's really important for the collar that you bind off loosely. There's many different ways to bind off. I am, I'm, I like the simple bind off and I'm just continuing knitting and purling and binding off as I go. Um, but you do need to make sure it's loose enough so that it doesn't get too tight and then you don't want it too loose so that it doesn't look good. So just make sure you're being consistent with the tension and that it's not too tight. So you're gonna bind off all the way around here, knitting one and purling one and binding off as you go. making sure that it's loose enough. Okay, so I'm nearing the end here and I am about to bind off and here we go. I am now done with the ribbing and all of this is complete. Now I'll show you what the sweater is looking like here. Now that it's all done, the ribbing. I'll turn it like this. So now we will work on 
Um, now we're going to work on the arms. So I'll tell you a little bit about the arms. Okay guys, now it's time to knit the sleeves. I actually already knit one so you can visualize what it looks like. So here is my sleeve that I have completed. Um, sleeves always look bigger than you think they're gonna be, but they always look bigger because they're gonna be folded in half. So I decided I wanted to come down about eight inches and leave eight inches um, for my armhole. Okay, so you decide how much you want. Um, you, again, you can measure the circumference of your arm um, up by your shoulder. And I wanted my sleeves to be quite a bit generous. Um, there is no uh, sleeve shaping. So the sleeve is the same size all the way down until you get to the cuff. And then I reduce stitches for the ribbing. So I knit two together all the way across. So I decreased my stitch count basically in half. And then I did about a little over three inches in ribbing and then I bound off. So when you um, fold the sleeve in half, this is eight inches. So in total, my sleeve is 16 inches. Okay, so you are going to want to cast on stitches that will get you 16 inches or about 16 inches. Um, and um, so for me, I cast on about 40 two stitches. So we're, you cast on stitches here and I worked for about 14 inches until I decreased for the cuff. So overall my sleeve is around 17 inches um, and it was helpful to put the cardigan on and granted I know it's still open but it's helpful to kind of put this on and see where it's hitting your arm and then measure how long you want it to be. So again, this is about 20 inches long. My armhole depth is about eight inches. I wouldn't go too much smaller than eight inches, maybe just a little bit smaller. Because by the time you fold this and seam this, you're gonna lose a little bit of space when you seam it as well. Um, and that can be pretty, pretty narrow. Um, so anyway, that is how the sleeves work. So I'm gonna show you how to cast on um, and work the sleeve. So for me, like I said, 42 stitches was what I worked with here. Or no, I'm sorry, I did 45 stitches. 45 stitches for my sleeve. So you just need to figure out, A, how wide you need your sleeve to be. Mine is 16 inches, so you can go a little less or you can go bigger. And then within that number, then you need to figure out how many stitches you need to cast on to get you to that sleeve width, okay? And one thing I wanted to mention um, when deciding how, um, how deep to go with your armhole, if you're knitting with thick yarn like I am, you'll need to be a little bit more generous with the armhole depth just because the yarn is so thick um, that it will feel much smaller. So if I were to knit this on a much thinner yarn with smaller needles, if, if my gauge was much smaller, I wouldn't need to be quite as generous with the armhole depth. That's just a, a word of caution. Um, it, it'll feel like eight inches with super bulky weight yarn will feel much um, more snug than eight inches on a DK weight yarn. Just just to be clear. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're figuring out your armhole depth. Okay, so for the sleeve, like I said, I am going to cast on 45 stitches. Again, um, it needs to be in multiples of three. Um, so figure out how many stitches you need for your sleeve width. And um, again, I'm just gonna show you quickly how to get this started. We're starting at the point where um, the sleeve will hit the shoulder. Um, so, and then we'll work for a certain length and then we will decrease for the sleeve. So I'm gonna cast on my stitches here and I'll see you back here when it's time to start the Irish mesh stitch. So cast on your stitches. Okay, so I've casted on my 45 stitches for my sleeve using the long tail cast on method. Now I'm just gonna flip the work and I'm just gonna purl back to set up for my um, Irish mesh stitch. So just purl back as you would 
on any of the other even rows, but this just helps to set up for the Irish mesh stitch. So I'll see you back here once I'm done purling across this row. Okay, so I've just finished purling across my first row, so I'm gonna turn the work, and now I'm gonna begin the Irish mesh stitch, and I am just simply going to knit two, yarn over, slip one, knit two, pass that slip stitch over, yarn over, slip one, knit two, pass that slip stitch over. So you're gonna continue this all the way to the end. So we're gonna continue working Irish mesh stitch just as you have before. So you can just reference the four row repeat directions listed in the video description. And you just continue working this um, Irish mesh stitch, repeating rows one through four until you get to your desired arm length. And again, just for reference, you're gonna need to do your own measurements, but um, I knit Irish mesh stitch until about 14 inches here, okay? So this is where we cast on, this is where we're starting, and we're working um, to your desired arm length minus three inches or so for the ribbing, okay? So figure out how long you want to make your sleeve by putting the cardigan on, seeing where it hits your arm, and measuring down. So my cardigan hit my arm right about here, and I decided to make my sweater arm length about 17 inches. So I have about three inches for the ribbing, a little over, so I'm going to knit to 14 inches, just for reference, okay? 14 inches and then about three rows, or three inches of ribbing, and that's 17 inches. Okay, so continue the Irish mesh stitch for the length you want, and I'll see you back here once we get to this point where we need to decrease for the ribbing, okay? So end after a wrong side row, end after a purl row, and then we will be decreasing on the right side. Okay, so I'll see you back here in a little okay, bit. Okay, so I have knit about 14 inches for my sleeve, and now it's time to decrease for the ribbing. And I am gonna decrease by just knitting two together all the way across and then, um, then we will do the ribbing. So make sure you're on the right side of the work now when we decrease for the cuffs. And you can decide how much you wanna decrease. Um, because we are not gradually decreasing for the cuff as we go on the sleeve, this will be a pretty steep decrease, decreasing um, e each stitch here. So we're just simply going to insert our needle into two stitches and pull through and that is knitting two together. So that is all I'm doing all the way across the work because we're knitting um, in multiples of three. Sometimes you might have an even number of stitches or odd number of stitches. Um, so it, you might have an extra stitch at the end. Okay, if you have an odd number of stitches on your needles. So you're just gonna keep knitting two together if you wanna decrease this much all the way across. If you don't want as steep of a decrease, you can do a, um, a knit two together, knit one, but if you have a lot of stitches, um, I suggest doing a knit two together all the way across. If you want to decrease even more, you could go back and um, do some additional decreases um, if you want it to decrease anymore. Okay, so I'm just knitting two together all the way across here.
and I had an odd number of stitches so I am going to end up with one extra stitch at the end here okay and then I'm just gonna knit that and now we can start our ribbing so I am going to do a purl one knit one all of the way across purl one knit one all right and then we're going to turn the work and we're going to knit the net stitches purl the purl stitches so I had I ended up with an odd number of stitches, so um, I'm going to knit, purl. You can see the knit stitches and the purl stitches. Knit, purl. Okay, so keep doing this until you've gone about three inches. I went a tad over three inches, um, and then you're going to want to bind off on the right side of the work. So just make sure um, when you're ready to bind off, you've just finished a wrong side row. So I will see you back here when it is time to bind off. Okay, so I have just finished a wrong side. I'm now facing the right side and now I'm gonna bind off. And just for reference, I have 23 stitches on my needle. Um, I decreased to 23 stitches. So now it's time to bind off. So I'm simply gonna bind off in the one by one rib on the right side. I have the right side of the work facing me. So now I'm just going to knit one, purl one in the pattern, and I'm going to start binding off. Knit one, bind off, purl one, bind off. Knit one, bind off, purl one, bind off. So you're going to continue this all the way till you have your last stitch. Okay, I'm at my last stitch here, I'm binding off. I'm going to snip the yarn and pull, pull that through. Okay, so you've got your sleeve done. Now you're gonna just make sure you complete the second sleeve exactly the same way as you've completed the first sleeve. So I'll see you back here once you've got both sleeves finished and then we will be seaming everything together. Okay, this is hard to get in frame here, but um, bear with me here. So here is what we have done already. We've got both sleeves finished, we've seamed the shoulders, we've done the collar. Now it's time to attach the sleeves on either side. Um, so I'm going to push this up here and work on um, the right sleeve. Okay, so we've got our right shoulder seam here. And now we need to lay our sleeve flat. You're going to also want to make sure you have some scrap yarn or three removable stitch markers to just put the sleeve in place here. Um, okay, so let me make sure you can see this here. Okay, so here we go. We are going to kind of line up the middle of the sleeve to that shoulder seam. And you can take your tape measure and, and use the tape measure as a guide. So we want about, it. so if I have 16 inch, if I have a 16 inch sleeve here, I need eight inches down from this uh, seam and eight inches down from this seam. So I'm just gonna kind of line this up here and I'm first gonna try to pin um, the middle of the sleeve to that shoulder seam and make sure that's kind of in the right place. So if if I've got 16 inches here, you know what, and what you can do too is fold the sleeve in half and mark the center here and then line that, hold it, and then line this up to the shoulder seam here. So I'm gonna do that and mark it. This way you can use a, a short piece of scrap yarn and just tie it together. Okay, so that's that. And then now I'm going to kind of just double check and make sure 
that I've got eight inches here and I'm gonna mark eight inches down. So I'm gonna seam, pin this eight inches down over here. And then do the same thing on this side. So we're just kind of keeping this in place, eight inches. And I'm gonna mark it right here this at the end and this is where I wanted it to go okay so that's kind of how we want to hold our piece in place now we are going to be seaming this part okay so we're going to take um, some scrap yarn and start connecting this sleeve to this side. Now, we've got our work going this way and our work going this way. So it is not a one for one ratio on how we stitch them together. Um, but I'll get in some more detail on that. Okay, I've threaded my tapestry needle with a pretty long piece of yarn here. And I am gonna start down here. I'm actually going to remove the stitch marker um, after I do my first kind of connection, I'm just going to go up through the very end, leaving a tail here, and just kind of go down here so I have my work connected. Okay, so my work is connected. I'm going to remove the stitch marker because it can be hard um, to work while it's in. So I'm going to remove this now. Easier said than done. So I've got my work connected where I want to start. And now, remember how we went through the Vs? Um, when we seamed the shoulders, we're going to go through the Vs on this side. And you can continue to kind of pull this, make sure you don't lose your tail. We're going to go through the Vs on this side and the bars on this side, but it cannot be a one for one. So I'm going to pick up one bar here right now and then I'm going to find that next V here and then I'm going to go through two bars on this side and you're going to have to kind of gauge how it's lining up you have to kind of um, see how it's coming together and if the way you're attaching it will get you here at the same rate, right? So sometimes this isn't an exact science, but you're just going to have to kind of figure it out as you go. Here I'm going to go through one. Okay, I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. But I have already started seaming, but I'll explain to you what I did. So I did remove that first stitch marker once I just um, used my piece of yarn. I threaded my tapestry needle. I left a little tail when I first went through both sides to just connect it at the bottom and then I removed the stitch marker. Then you go through the V's on this side and then one bar on this side, one V and then two bars on this side. So you have to kind of evenly spread out and figure out um, the ratio from this side to this side. Since we're knitting perpendicularly, it's not a one to one ratio. So I'll show you here. So I am just gonna go through one bar on this side. And then I'm gonna go through the V on this side. Okay, so I've got the V. So now I'm gonna go through two bars on this side. Two bars, one, two. Whoops, but make sure you're not looping your yarn through. Okay, and then back through the V on this side. And it can get kind of crazy because that stitch um, is close to the edge here. It's hard to see sometimes, but basically you want to make sure that as you continue, this is going to line up. So you don't want it to be pulled um, so that this isn't hitting at the same point here. So um, I went through two. I'm going to go through one now. 
but basically you have to do your best to make sure this is all lining up. So you go through the V's on the shoulder, on the arm, and then you're going through the bars on the body of the work. Okay, so just continue in that fashion. Okay, I'm nearing the middle and it's lining up pretty well. Um, so I'm gonna continue on. I just came up this side. So now I'm gonna go through the V here. And since I'm pretty comfortable with how everything is lining up, I am gonna go ahead and remove this stitch marker and continue on, continue on. I'm gonna continue on to the end here, um, just as I've been doing and seaming this together. So I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, I'm nearing the end here. I'm just going through the last few stitches, but I did have to do a little bit of finagling to make it line up, so just do your best. And I'm gonna remove the last stitch marker here and make sure I'm, I've gone through everything. And then now I am just going to go back through on the body and now, and pull the tapestry needle off. So now my work is seamed here. Okay, so you've seamed the sleeve to one side. Now you need to go to the other side and seam the other sleeve. Okay, so now you're gonna do the exact same thing and seam the other sleeve to the other side. And I will meet you back here when you've done that and then I'll show you how to fold the cardigan in, um, in half and fold it together so you can seam up the body and the arms. Okay, so I have seamed both of my sleeves to the cardigan. I'm trying to get everything in frame here so you can see, but it's pretty big. So I've got the sleeve attached here, sleeve attached here. So now I'm gonna fold it, and there's lots of ends to even, so don't worry. Um, <clears throat> but we're gonna fold it here and then seam the sides and the sleeves all together at once. And this is a little bit easier because the, um, the work is all facing the same direction, so you don't need to worry about um, seaming in a certain ratio, okay? So I am going to start uh, seaming up the body at the bottom right here. I'm gonna work my way up to the armpit here and then seam the sleeve the seam okay so I'm gonna zoom in here and show you how to get started with the seaming of the body here okay so take a piece of yarn and try to make it as long as you can kind of stand it um, mine's gonna be pretty long you're gonna to want to thread the needle and get a piece of yarn that's long enough to kind of seam everything up here. And then we are going to start at the bottom and I just always usually start by kind of connecting both sides at the bottom. So I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna leave a tail here to weave in and I'm gonna come down, I'm sorry, I'm gonna come up here. And this just kind of gets both sides together, okay? <clears throat> Since I came out of this side, now I'm gonna be going, this is that first stitch, I'm gonna be going in the bars here and I'm gonna pick up two bars on this side Come up and I'm going to pick up two bars on this side. Okay. So came out here, so I'm going to pick up two bars here. Okay. 
and I came up right there. So I'm going to pick up two bars on this side. Okay, and you can pull it together at the end or you can start to do it as you go. So you continue, and I know the pattern changes. So I've got two bars. So this is just through the bottom ribbing. And I'll show you what it looks like once we get to the lace section. Um, but I'm going through two bars on each side here. And then we get to, I'm almost to the lace side here. But basically you go into the bars in between, that first and second stitch. Okay, so now I'm in the lace portion, two bars on that side, two bars here. So I'm just working my way up seaming two bars okay so I'll show you okay so I have seamed this by going up the armpit and down one thing I wanted to say to you if you're not great at like keeping things even um, you can seam up to the armpit and then start at the sleeve and sleeve, sleeve up to the armpit separately. And that way you can help, to, that helps to make sure you seam things evenly. Um, okay, so I'm at the end now. So I am going to trim that, cut that off. And just for the record, I made my yarn way too long. I had so much left over, so you don't need to go quite as long as I showed. But maybe like, double the length or triple the length of what you have to sew. Um, okay, so once you've done one side, you can go and do the other side. Okay, so now once you've finished seaming both sides, it's time to weave in all of these crazy ends. Um, and there will probably be a lot. So basically, I like to weave the ends that I've got around the seams. I usually just take my tapestry needle, weave the end through, and I just kind of go through the seam a little bit here, um, up at the top. You don't wanna go through too much. Um, and I just kind of weave the, and back through this way and cut that off. Kind of stretch it through. So most of your ends will be around those thick seams. So just go back through and weave those ends back in um, through your work. The ones that are like here, you can seam them back through, you can weave them back through the seams here. So just take some time, take your tapestry needle and weave all of those loose ends back through your work. Some of them that are like, like this one, I might tie a quick knot around and then have that go through this seam here just so it doesn't get too loose. Um, but just go back through and weave in all of your ends. And then if you would like to block your work, you can do that as well. <laughs> 